Hello, this is Steve Ramona, your host for Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. I want to thank our sponsors, InPhone, and with InPhone, you can place your business on everybody's cell phone, turn their business into a web app, and with a click of a button, they'll have access to you 24-7. And also Pantheon.fm. Have you ever thought about monetizing and taking your podcast to the next level? Well, Pantheon can do that. Let us show you how. Reach out to Steve Ramona, the host, at info.co slash sr1, and I will go over with you how you can make your podcast really stand out. Let's enjoy the show. Thanks again, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. This is your host, Steve Ramona. And I'm going to say I truly have a friend on my show today. He is taking marketing to the next level. He's doing things that's blown up people's businesses, but he's doing it with a servant's heart. And that's why he's on the show. Buzz, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Steve. I want to talk about the book right away because I've read it. I love it. I'm going to read it again. (laughs) The Rule of 26. There it is. Booyah. If you're you're watching on or if you're viewing it, I'm, I'm holding up the Rule of 26. Now, this is for service-based businesses, three steps to doubling website revenue. And you read it. It's got really simple steps to do that. And and I know a lot of people. You know my network's big. (laughs) I don't know anybody's ever told me. And there are probably people out there that market with your website. Well, let's talk about that because I was blown away by that. (laughs) So what was like the, like if you had to pick out one thing that, that stuck out, stuck out the most out of the book and those who haven't read it it's a short book i do i do not mince words um but what's the one thing that stuck out for you that you think you'll be able to immediately uh use to impact your business how much traffic i can get with my website i was blown away oh yeah i didn't know how little you need to actually make a difference right yes i'm like (laughs) you know people spend i mean i know guys that charge twenty thousand for a website they're not getting this traffic that you're sharing no, no, no. And that the thing is, is that people talk about getting like 10,000 uh, viewers on their or visitors on their website in a month. And I'm like, yeah, if you're a solopreneur, what are you going to do with 10,000 view uh, visitors? Because if, if you think about it, that means you have 2000 people reaching out to you in a month, you don't even have the bandwidth to even talk to all of them. So why would you want 10,000 people coming? And then out of those 2000, how much how many of them are actually uh, viable leads right are they qualified leads and so many people are like well i I don't care i'll I'll sift through all of them yeah but you're losing money every time you talk to a lead that will never be a buyer well how do i know unless i talk to them it depends on how you attract them and then we talk about that in the book as well you know it's like you need to attract people you need to attract the right people not just people the right people well and that's the thing about traffic and i should expand on that not just numbers of I got a hundred thousand people a month look at my website. It's Mm -hmm. the qualified traffic. Right. From your website. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you, yeah. So, I mean, if it it hurts your conversion rate, when you're putting poor traffic onto your website, it hurts your search engine optimization because people are bouncing off your website. And so Google doesn't think you have a good website because it's not useful to enough people who are visiting there. Right. So Throwing traffic at your website to see what sticks is actually hurting you in multiple facets of your business because you only have so many hours in a month to talk to people, yeah. right? And you and I always joke, just like, I'll give anybody 45 minutes, right? I say that in gist because it's not that I'll talk to anybody for 45 minutes, but I will I will talk to the right people, any any right person for 45 minutes, right? Right, right. Oh, yeah. Like if I, if, if I don't think that there's value there, I am not going to waste their time and my time. It's not just my time I'm worried about. I'm worried about their time because if they're not ready to talk to me, then they're wasting their time and that's valuable time to them because that's the only asset they have, right? Because I'm in marketing, like marketing takes money. If you don't have money, you shouldn't be talking to me. You should read my book and try to work out all of the kinks to get some money. And then when it gets to a point where you're trying to buy your time back, then you hire a marketer like me. But right now, books are cheap and time's cheap for somebody who has more time than money, yeah. right? Yeah. And I even say that in the book. Like if you don't have, if you have more money than time, then don't worry about reading my book. Just hire somebody like me to get it done for you because you're not going to waste your time learning the things we teach in the book. 
right? But that's why I wrote the book. It was for it was during the COVID, right? And I said, you know, I, I can't help all these people because one, they can't afford me. And two, I don't have the bandwidth to help as many people who needed help during COVID. So I said, all right, I'm gonna write a book and I'm gonna help people do it for free. Well, technically free, it's 15 bucks. Yeah. For $15, everybody's getting ROI. <laughs> everybody's getting, yeah. if you don't get yeah. ROI out of the $15 to buy the book, no, then you're no, doing something no. wrong. No, and right. you really need to get a marketer. In. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know, businesses, especially the small, medium sized, they're trying to cut costs and stuff. How important is marketing right. for those businesses? No, oh, it's the last thing you need to cut. And that's the problem is that people get scared and they think, well, then that's, that's where I got to cut because it is, it's a luxury is marketing is a luxury. It's like, no, marketing is a necessity. Cause they're like, you have to have two things to make a business run people or product, right? Your service or product. You have to be able to deliver. Okay. Sales. Sales doesn't happen without marketing period in a story. Okay. And so, yes, a lot of us bootstrap and we spend our, we give away freely our time right? But they forget how much time it takes or it took to get them to, from point A to point B, maybe in their second phase, right? And they start getting into the growth phase. And it's like, well, okay, we'll just keep doing what we've been doing. And I'll tell you from personal experience, I spent 13 years doing that. And it grew a, a multi-million dollar company grow, broke, trying to just put more effort in. And that's another thing that the rule 26 does is it leverages time and effort, right? Because we did... So people who don't know, um, I will give you the, the plot away. It's on page 22. Um, and it is the rule 26 says that if you increase your traffic by 26%, that's why we're saying it doesn't take a lot, your conversion rate by 26% and your average revenue per client by 26%, you will have an, a leverage outcome or compounded output of 100% more revenue coming from your website. Right? Those are good numbers. I mean, if 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 you gave me somebody who did that with money, pure money, here I'll give me, you know, seven. What is that? Seventy eight dollars. I'll give you a hundred dollars back every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd give you every dollar I possibly could. Yeah, right. Because that's a you're getting a twenty two percent more on your money on your effort when you utilize the three objectives of the rule twenty six. A lot of marketers out there. We know that we were talking about it earlier. Yes. What makes Buzz different than those other ones and unique? You know, it's so funny. People talk about results driven. And the problem with results is another. <laughs> this, is all, this is a really good question because it comes right back to the book. Yeah. Um, my whole, the whole thing with marketers is KPIs, right? Because KPIs are uh, indicators of results. Okay. And when I went to write the book, I was really looking to simplify marketing for the layman. Because I, I feel like as marketers, we do look at the big picture of marketing and we know all of these KPIs, key performance indicators to tell whether or not something's working for somebody, right? And so we live and die by those KPIs. But I'm like, nobody cares about the 68, K, uh, 68 KPIs that Spotify, or not Spotify, but um, Shopify uh, has to track. Nobody cares about the over 100, 100 KPIs that you can track with HubSpot. Nobody cares. As a marketer, I don't care about that many KPIs. So which ones do they actually drive revenue? Ah, now we're talking. Like, because that's all really the, the business owners cares about is what gets me more revenue. So what makes us different is that we are ROI driven, not just results driven results in all of those KPIs we talk about, those are vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. ROI is return on investment or revenue on investment. I wish there's an extra yeah. R in there. Yeah. Returned revenue we on investment, right? <laughs> Maybe we need to do that. that is a, R -R -R -I, baby. That's what, if we add an extra R in your ROI. <laughs> there you go. Bro. Yeah, right there. That's good marketing right there. See how good he is? He's marketing right in the middle of the show. Well, and it's great the vanity, but the 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 results. So that could be like uh, some marketer takes my business and gives me twenty leads this month, and I get zero sales. Mm -hmm. My results are I got twenty leads from the company, but yep. you're talking about ROI. We'll just start using that with zero, <laughs> right? And I'm paying them five thousand a month, for example. Yeah. 
Exactly. So, I'm, so am I throwing that you, money right down the toilet? It can. Sense? Yeah, because and, and that's another thing is you have to be ready for marketing now because there's a couple of things that goes with that. So he gave you that person gave you five leads, right? Did they give you five qualified leads? It doesn't matter whether or not they bought. It's whether they were going to buy regardless of what you said. If they were never going to buy, regardless of what you had to offer, then they were an unqualified lead. If they could could have bought and they were in the buying cycle, right? Because fi only 5% of your market is ready to buy right now at any given time. Okay? Yeah. So just remember that. Okay. So when you take a look at those five leads and you go, well, you know what? Only one of them was really ready to buy. Okay, great. So did you, did you close that? Now, if I gave you five more of them, would you close one? Yes. Okay. It was a qualified lead. It was okay. Your marketing is okay. Right. Even though you didn't get immediate ROI on that, you definitely got something there because you can now nurture that lead. Now the other four there, were, could they buy? Yes, just not in the right time. They're part of the 95%. This is where marketing really helps. Then you take all five of these people who didn't buy from you, and now you have to put them into a nurture sequence and continue to remarket to them so that when they are in the 5% window, and they're ready to buy, they're going to buy you because you're the one that stuck with them through that 95% desert period of them not being ready to buy. That's so well said. I've never heard it spoken that way. Listeners, this is really good nuggets. I I, he, I should be paying him for this. That, I mean, seriously, <laughs> I've talked to a lot of marketers. Send your he, donations to yeah, Buzz Like The GoFundMe account <laughs> is. The GoFundMe. Um, but that that is so simple. It's not that difficult. I mean, it's simple math. What ma What makes it complex are people. Right. And there's two reasons why it becomes complex. One, marketers make money making things complex because if it was too, if, and that there's a difference between simple and easy. Okay. But before I get to that point, the other point is that people themselves are complex. And so figuring them out becomes the complexities, right? How do you get people to say yes? How do you get people to pay attention to you? How do you get people to take action? That's your complexity, right? So when we talk about simple, that means that it's easy to understand. It's easy to imply, but it's not easy to execute all the time, okay? Business is a simple thing. I have a product or service that other people want. They buy it. I make money. It's that simple. Yeah. But we all know how hard business is because it's not easy. So simple does not equal easy. Very well said, gosh. Nuggets coming out of everywhere <laughs> here today. I'm glad we did this show. So when we take marketing, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. and we just said people need to have it, and mm -hmm. you said, hey, here's a book, read my book. But it just seems like people are either doing the wrong marketing or aren't doing it. What do you mm -hmm. say to them? Is okay. There's either there's doing it poorly, okay, and there's doing it wrong. Okay, so you can do all the right things poorly and get zero out of it, and you can do all the wrong things really well and still get zero out of it. You got to do the right things well to get your ROI. So when somebody says, well, I used, I did uh, social media marketing. I, I, I posted every day, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, yeah, you worked really hard. Probably doing it the wrong way. I know I did for many, many years. On my, you know who you, the hardest people to market are? Marketers. Media? Marketers. No, marketers. <laughs> We're the hardest people to market. Dude, I am the cobbler with the kids with no shoes, man. <laughs> They're all walking around barefoot, right? I can make other people, millions of dollars. I have for the last 17 years, tens upon tens of millions of dollars through the marketing that I've created. I have I've actually marketed for over 1200 companies. Okay. And I've, and I have built multi-million dollar companies for myself. Okay. But the actual marketing of my companies, not the branding, not the messaging, the actual marketing. Okay. Cause there's a big difference there. The actual marketing of that and how much money actually came from that 
compared to all the other things that I did as far as branding and networking and sales and all the other stuff right there, fractional. Now on the flip side, my clients come to me and I'm able to take the marketing and outpace what they've done with word of mouth, referrals, JVs, and dot, dot, dot. Okay. Because every marketers are the marketing marketing firms are the hardest companies to market for because there's so many darn numbers of us. There's so many of us. Yeah. And it's so hard to go, well, what what kind of marketer are you? We're an integrated marketing firm. And people are like, well, what the heck is that? Well, if I told you what a social media marketing firm was, do, would you know what that is? Probably not. You probably have an idea of what it is, but there are dozens of versions of social media marketers, yeah. right? Because there's so many ways to do social media and everybody has a different way of doing it, right? But if you're a dentist, what does a dentist do? Works on your teeth. Teeth, yeah. yeah. It's pretty easy. Now, I so we know what you're selling. It's a lot easier to market that than it is this nebulous thing we call marketing, right? Yeah. yeah that's... <laughs> so, so I have a hard, so I have one of the hardest jobs in marketing myself. So that's one of the things that I'm doing as a business owner is giving myself more and more time to be my own marketer, being on shows like this to advocate for my company by sharing the knowledge for free. I'm a giver. That's a servant leader is what actually I, I come from is a servant leader mentality, right? Which we're already a service-based business, which is a servant business. How do you lead one of those? Have a servant leader, right? I serve my clients, right? We are a client-centric company with uh, employee-centric, uh, we're an employee-centric company with client-centric employees, right? We're this egg, okay? I'm just a shell, the yolk is the nutrients, which is my employees. The yolk, the yolk is the fruit of the effort. Yeah. Well, that's well said because it's doing business with the servant's heart. Mm -hmm. And you just talking about free and people are so afraid to do that. You're doing that here. You probably, somebody could probably build their marketing from this show today. And you're, they, get, they could point themselves in the right direction yeah, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> at least get started. And you humbly, with no thought at all, are giving out this information. What do you talk yeah. about free giving away value as marketing? I don't consider it giving away. And I technically don't okay. even consider it free because I've now taxed you with a duty to go and make yourself smarter with the information I just gave you. Right? So if anything, I'm, ch I'm a challenge, I'm challenging yeah. people. Right. Because information is nothing without action. Yeah. Right. And people talk about like book smart, smart and wise. Right. Those who read books can be book smart and they can be smart. Those who take action on what they've read with results are wise. Right. Yeah. So I might have made you smarter, but the only thing that make you wiser is the effort behind it, which is not free. Yeah. No, and I love that. That 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 is so well said because you're right. Action is time and effort, which is a currency in yeah. a sense. It's not for time any. is the ultimate cur currency, right? Yeah, yeah. You and it's it's the commodity that as business owners we give away purposely, right? And the reason that I go on shows like this and give and offer up the information that I'm giving you. Through wisdom, it's through my wisdom that I'm able to even give it, right? So I've already I've already paid that time, yeah. right? But th the problem is, is that time is a commodity that cannot be replaced. It is the only commodity that cannot be replaced. Once you've spent it, it's gone. It'll never be back. Yeah. So we have to spend our time wisely. And it takes, unfortunately, it takes a lot of wisdom <laughs> to realize that and to exercise it. Because yeah. there's a lot of people understand how critical time is, and they still waste it. I'm moving around here because you're getting me. I'm fired up right now. I've known <laughs> you, but I've learned so much. And we, we're running out of time here. Let's do a <laughs> shout out so people people can find you. How can they get a hold of you? It's super easy. Just go to buzzworthy.biz. And it's that's my company. Um, there's a link for the book down at the bottom of the homepage. If you want to just look at the book, go to ruleof26.com. And if you Google Michael Bazinski, you're not going to miss me. I've been around a minute and I've been staying busy. You can't forget that face either. And I can say <laughs> that because we're friends now. 
And I'm going to do something as well because I'm fired up. I, marketing is such nebulous. It's such a great word. There's so many ways you can go. So audience, the first five people that reach out to Buzz, mention this podcast or my name, $20 Amazon gift card. I will send you, Buzz will send it, me your contact info and I'll email you, uh, get your email address and your name and I'm going to send you a $20 Amazon gift card. Again, that's a way of same thing as you giving free information wisdom that you're going to have to do currency of action the same thing here you've got to do currency of action to reach out and unfortunately in podcasts people are like ah he sounds great but i take the butt out of the equation just reach out to him because you're getting paid hey you can't can't go wrong with that and then if uh and if we talk um if, if you do reach out and we get on the horn and we i, I do offer a complimentary uh discovery call it's not a sales call. It is a discovery call. It literally half the time I tell people not to use me and I give them somebody or something to use instead um, because I'm not here to take people's money. I am only here to make people money. And so, uh, but after that phone call, I'll get that information as well. And we'll get you a free copy of the rule of 26 and I'll sign it myself. Well, look at that. That's a true servant. Well, now Boy. we have $25 on the line. Yeah. yeah. And then get the book. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. We have $35 on the yeah, line. I was gonna, so yeah. We have 40 bucks. There's 40 bucks. 40 we're bucks sitting the there. And, and we're more than happy to do that because oh, yeah. we're here to help people. Yeah. And they can find the book on Amazon. I think that's where I got yeah, it. Yeah, Amazon. Or you can go to ruleof26.com and just click the Amazon link right there at the top of the page. What could, what could good marketing do for a company? Make or break. Right, really, it, marketing the, the the lack of good marketing will break it. the The presence of great marketing will make it. You will not see a company out there that has truly made it, profitably made it, without good marketing. That's it is the one thing. It can be the one thing holding it. it nine times out of ten, I find it is the one thing that is holding them back. They've done marketing wow. so many ways wrong, right? And people will say, well, there's the sales and there's this and that. Yes, there are six pieces to every business. I promise you this, okay? This will be the last nugget for you, okay? There's, it's, I call it the honeycomb paradigm, okay? And there's six pillars to a profitable business. Mindset, money, people, process, marketing, and sales, okay? You must have all six of them properly aligned for you to basically shoot out of being just another home business, another solopreneur on any of those things that are sitting anywhere in between $250,000 and $750,000. You once you start getting close, the closer and the closer you get to a million dollars, the more and more all six of them count. You can rely on one, right? There's a lot of people out there that they just, they get, they use their money smarts and they frugal, frugally are able to raise their, uh, to um, build their business, right? Other people use straight mindset and strength and brute force, right? There's other people who use their processes to make that money, right? But at some point, you have to start relying on all of those six pillars to really grow a business that you own, not a business you work for. Wow, that's crazy. So, okay, so that's interesting. So what are those six again? So I'll make sure yes. listen to your mindset matters. Your money matters, your people matter, your processes matter, your marketing matters, and your sales matter. Those that's the honeycomb paradigm. Hit a home run on all six of those. You've got you're a million dollar or more company. Almost you, no, you'll be able to you will be able to scale, scale your business to whatever number you want once you have ah. all six of those cylinders hitting in synchron in synchronicity. So we're running out of time, but we talked about this earlier. What's the difference between growth and scale? Ooh, that's answer. a good one. Okay. So growth is where we all of us start from zero to about a million in the service-based businesses, okay? And some service-based businesses are a little different than others because of the amount of money you actually get to keep. So if you think about real estate, don't think about the actual money that is collected for the house. Talk about the money you collected for your commissions, okay? Financial advisors the same way. But when we're the other, the rest of us, they were usually getting money by the hour or by the project, Okay. Your first million, you can grow. Now, it's, it's some of it, it takes like 11 years for me, right? Nice and slowly because it's brute force. Scalability, like we talked about the rule of 26, is when we start using levers to get more out of the effort. One plus one equals two is an example of growth. One 
times three, or I'm sorry, not one, sorry, two times three is six as an example of scale. Uh, that's what, okay. Well, I'm glad I asked that question because listeners out there, businesses, that could be a game changer for deciding what your business plan is, right? Yeah. And your mission for your business. I, I tell people, I said, listen, if you're a solopreneur right now and you're looking to add a your first person because you have now grown your, your business to a point where you need help just to do the business you're doing right now, you're in a growth phase. As that second person become it, it as you find yourself even with a second person uh cycling between sales and fulfillment back and forth you're stuck in a growth uh, it's, it's basically a stagnated growth cycle because you can never out fulfill and sell yourself okay you need something else that can sell for you or you need things something else that can fulfill for you and in a scalable business you have both and that's where people and process come in right in the sales side, it's where marketing and sales comes in, right? You don't have to have a salesperson to scale your sales. You need marketing to help you scale your sales, okay? When it comes to your fulfillment, you don't necessarily need people. Sometimes you just need better processes, but they're both scalable issues. And then as you scale to a certain point, then you have to add the other ones in so to truly scale. And that's where that, that honeycomb paradigm comes in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to have you come back because I've learned so much today. <laughs> Listeners, I'm going to do this. We listen to this over and over. It'll be on YouTube today. Go out and find it or at, reach out to me and I'll get you the link because this if you're starting to want to start a business and you're a startup or an entrepreneur, this is a show you need to listen to. I've had some great shows, but this is one of my best. Thank you, Buzz. No I worries, really man. appreciate it. Take it so, easy. So last thing, what, what kind of tip? I know you left a lot of nuggets already, but what's a tip? <laughs> Maybe a mindset tip or something for, you know, people starting a business or in a business that can help them. I'm going to tell you to read a book. It's called Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Okay. You, you're familiar? Yep. Okay. He actually just endorsed the rule of 26. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to endorse one of his books because he changed my life with this one book, the rule of 26. And that's how, and it te teaches you how to start your business to where you're profitable the first day with one book.